Hello guys, good morning and very welcome to my channel. The spring is in the air. <laughs> in the air. <laughs> and uh, it's soon time to turn on those trackers here, but they have to wait for a couple of weeks before I do that. But the sun is getting higher and higher and we are now on the right side of the year again. So it's uh, time for a little update. I uh, had a crazy week going on here. First of all, when I was going to my work there, my loop broke down on me and uh, the rear axle did broke there. So I had to do some repair work on my car on that one. And then later I was out in the wood and uh, putting down some trees for firewood. And the steering gear on my tractor just exploded there. So I've been standing there in the woods and uh, tried to repair it. I just uh, barely was able to take me home again. And uh, that tractor is actually standing right now. So I am using my old uh, military car here, the old Volvo Valp that I have. However, uh, I have done work on those cars and the tractor and uh, I also have done some work on my Volkswagen City Strummer. But I didn't have so much time over to do some kind of a great update video on this one. So there will be an update on the fly here. So I will just show you what I have done because uh, last week I told you that I was going to put all of my energy into this subframe of this uh, city strummer. And that's uh, almost what I have done there. But I had to do some other stuff with my other car as my loop that you have there. <laughs> and then you have my old military car there. Well, let's go in to the workshop here and uh, take a look at my city streamer that I have been working on most of the time not all the time I had to do some welding there on the loop <laughs> so lights on here we have it and you can see that I have just test installed this front here so it's not permanent at all so here is the engine bay and as you can see, I have the subframe here and uh, I have put a lot of hours into this subframe, especially on the steering rack there. I have sandblasted everything and now it looks really nice again. Here is how it looked before. And here it is now. In much better shape, of course. <laughs> All right. So... The plan with this weekend is to install the brake servo and the wiring to the car, not the high voltage wiring. I will take that later on. And uh, as you can see here, I have just test fitting this um, grill here. I bought this on uh, Autodoc and the fitting was really, really bad. So I have done some adjustment to it and now it fits pretty okay. And I also bought two new fenders for it, but the fittings on those was just terrible, so I had to send them back. So I bought a used one from a junkyard, and the other one am I actually going to use as it is. I bought that uh, fender there, by the way, from a girl at the same time when I bought a car, just a few weeks after I bought a car. So finally I have now just Try those out so they will fit really nice and uh, it's a big difference between the original uh, parts there and the other parts that I bought from actually screwvat.se and uh, yeah, the fitting was not good. And I sent them back and I have now just got the money from one of the fender. I don't know really why I am missing the payments from the other one. I sent them in the same package so I hope that I will have the money for the other fender too. However, I will probably find out that later. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I am right now. So uh, as I said there, I will install the brake servo, the wiring, and then I will install the motor itself, of course. By the way, let's take a look at that before we close this video up. 
So here is the motor and here is the brake lines. And uh, here is the motor mount and this one was really rusty. So I have painted this and also put on some spackle there to make it look much better than it did. And then we have the front uh, motor support. So this will be bolted where the starter normally used to be bolted. And it's almost the same as the original uh, mount there. And this one is the right rear. I had to drill two holes there because the fitting was not perfect. So uh, those are made out of stainless steel. They did look just great, but uh, I thought that uh, I will just paint them black. So they will look a little more original. Yeah, and you have probably seen everything else that I've done to this motor in the last video that I posted. And by the way, I also have a lot of questions why I am doing this. Uh, this is not good and this is not going to work. Well, probably not, but I will at least try. I mean, so many people ha has already done this conversion with uh, a Nissan Leaf motor together with the original gearbox. And uh, we all know that that works just fine. I don't think that so many people have tried this out with a flywheel and a clutch. And, uh, it can be a good reason for that. Of course, it's a lot of work that needs to be done before you have this set up. And uh, also, it's more likely to fail, of course. But as I said there, I am willing to try. And I am trying this so hard, just because that this electric car came like this, with a 5-speed gearbox on an electric motor from the factory. So that's why I am trying to replicate that feeling with this old car. An electric motor on a 5-speed manual gearbox. Why not just try it? And then I also have some questions about this axial force that will be applied to the bearings when I am using the clutch here. Because when I am engaging the clutch, I am actually putting a lot of thrust in the axial way here. And the ball bearings can't stand that kind of force. Some of you guys say. Uh, maybe that's true, but normally a normal ball bearing can handle up to 50% of the load rating that the ball bearing can handle in the radial way. So let's say that the ball bearing can handle 1000 kilo in the radial way. Well, then it can handle 500 kilo in the axial way. So uh, I think that regards to the bearings in the motor here, I think that that trust from that clutch will not be any problem. And uh, <laughs> also, how many times do you actually think that I am going to need a clutch here? I probably just do that for fun. I'm mostly going to use the second and the, the third gear, probably just the third gear all the time, and the reverse, of course. Mostly for fun, I will also have a breaker for that, so I can change the direction of the motor. So, yeah, I know this setup is not the best. It will maybe have some problems there in the future, but I am willing to take that chance. It's my motor and I do whatever I want to. But I am glad that you all are telling me this, but honestly, don't you think that I already have been thinking about this. I mean, come on. I had a lot of time spent together with this setup and I promise you that those thoughts have crossed my mind. And that's a risk that I am willing to take here. All right, that was a long talk. Now I uh, will start to work a little more on the car here and then I will go out in the wood and have a fantastic day out in the sun in the wood. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this little video update, uh, a little on the fly here, and uh, don't forget to subscribe as always, and if you have done that already, thank you so much, it really means much to me and to my channel. I hope I see you next time, take care guys, and goodbye.